Welcome to Ask the Latina. Corporations recognize that it is important to have gender diversity. The European Union established a 40% quota for businesses to have women on boards and executive levels, and so far achieved 30%. It is only a voluntary obligation for U.S. corporations. So far, less than 17% of women are in corporate management levels. Research has shown that ethnic and gender diversity, along with inclusive culture, drive stronger business performance, and yet only 1% of Latinas hold an executive position, and 2% sit on the board. Today we will focus on Latinas in leadership positions in the finance industry and how mentoring plays an important role if we are to see more Latinas in higher executive positions. Our guest today is Avec Guadalupe O'Brien, a senior executive in finance. Welcome, Avec. Thank you, Terry. Thank you so much. It's an honor to have you as a guest. It's my pleasure. Uh, Avec, um, you are among a few Latinas that have reached the high executive level. Uh, please tell us about your journey and also include your culture and heritage and your education. <laughs> well, Terry, I started my career in public accounting back in Mexico City. I actually started studying at the same time that I was a freshman in my college year in Mexico. Mm -hmm. I chose public accounting, quite frankly, because I was really good at math and really good at business law, and someone mm -hmm. told me that um, I could always get a job if I was an accountant, so not really knowing what accounting was. Mm -hmm. um, I started in public accounting in a, a, one of the big six firms, big accounting firms then. Then I went into industry. Then I came to Michigan, actually, to the United States to pursue my MBA. Okay. And after I graduated from my MBA, I went back into public accounting. I always had a dream to be um, a senior executive in a nonprofit organization. Mm -hmm. And so I achieved that. Uh, that's where I became a C-level executive. Mm -hmm. um, further, I had the opportunity to also lead professional organizations, uh, membership-driven organizations. Mm -hmm. And um, that's kind of how my, tr my, my journey went. So one role led to the next, and the one door opened the next one. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And Avec, you have taken on various leadership positions. So I know that you are the president of Alpha, which is the Association of Latino Professionals for America. Yes. And you're currently the president for FEI, which is Financial Executives International. Um, can you please tell us about these two organizations and what they offer members? Thank you, Ter Terry. Both organizations have a lot in common. Um, but I, again, they're very different as well. So the Association for Latino Professionals for America, that used to be Association for Latino Professionals in Finance and Accounting, mm -hmm. that's when I was um, working in public accounting. Um, what, they, what they offer their members are opportunities to network with each other and opportunities Good. to develop their leadership. Um, what we are very proud at Alpha is that we build Latino professionals and it's by allowing opportunities to learn and grow, to participate in events, both from uh, educational, professional development. Mm -hmm. And it's very similar to what financial executives offer. So and I am the president of the Detroit chapter of financial executives. And what we do, we, we are the place where financial executives come to network, to have peer-to-peer mm -hmm. -peer interactions, to network with key influencers, and to and to uh, gain access to career opportunities, learning opportunities, both from the professional standpoint, but also personal development. So um, it only makes your network stronger mm -hmm. and it helps you to be connected. They say um, when you need to build your network when you don't need it, because by the time you need it, you want it to be already there. Mm -hmm. um, it is, especially for us professionals in finance, it tends to be a very lonely path, esp right. especially as you advance. Right, right. You are, you tend to be in silos, it, it's not ideal, but it uh, becoming part of these organizations, you get to network with like-minded individuals mm -hmm. and at the same time become rich as a person. Right, right, that's great. So how did you become a leader of these nonprofit organizations and why is it important to, that Latinas get involved in these or similar organizations? Yes, it is very important because it is a risk-free learning environment. For instance, one of the things that I learned in Alpha was to present in public. So I had never had the opportunity before to speak publicly mm -hmm. and being at Alpha allowed me to 
speak in front of big audiences, large mm -hmm. audiences, mm -hmm. in our monthly meetings that sometimes were attended by anywhere between 50 and 100 individuals, and then at our national events that had a thousand, a thousand members attending. Mm -hmm. um, and so what it gave me was the confidence that when I do it in front of a client, in front of a vendor, now I know I can speak freely, now I can do it, because nobody at Alpha was judging me, or people were giving me feedback as to how mm -hmm. I could improve, but I am not going to lose my job because I'm a volunteer. Right. Uh, but becoming part of these organizations allows you to, to build that risk-free environment where you can mm -hmm. learn and grow without losing your job, without risking mm -hmm. your financial security. It's a professional yes. development. Professional development, mm -hmm. absolutely. And, and you will discover things that you're passionate about without even knowing as they allow you to have opportunities to volunteer in different areas, in marketing, in sales that are probably not in what you usually do, or some people who are not usually in finance can volunteer in the financial aspect. But to become president, to become a leader of that organization, and, and this is true for any organization, you get out of it as much as you put into mm -hmm. it. Just by signing up, you don't get anything out of it. You have to be involved, you have to be engaged, and you have to have your heart in it. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, the saying goes that you join these organizations for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. You really decide how much you want to involve yourself and invest into the organization. And you'll get it back tenfold, yeah. but you have to put your heart on it and you have to be a genuine commitment. That's true. That's great. Mm -hmm. We both know that there are not enough Latinas in executive leadership positions, especially in the finance industry. Mm -hmm. um, although half of the entry level workforce are women, few make mm -hmm. it to C-suite and especially women of color that include Latinas. Mm -hmm. um, as we see in this chart from the study done by McKinsey and Company, um, this study claims that the reasons women are lacking of interest is to get into the C-suite positions is because of balance between work and family commitments um, and they perceive pressures associated with the top jobs and too much politics. Um, you achieved the executive level position mm -hmm. at C-suite and your career and are these valid reasons and how should Latinas overcome these fears or these myths? But what are they? So I think, Terry, that the barriers for growth are the same for, or very similar for Latina women in, as they are for women in general. Mm -hmm. But the difference that we have, the additional challenge that we have, is we have an unconscious fear that we don't fit in. Yeah. Um, so yes, it is true that they are challenges of balancing life and balancing yeah. uh, profession and other commitments, but what we need to make sure is that we surround ourselves by role models who have done it. I was very blessed, I have been very blessed, that I worked for female leaders who were able to balance and to juggle, and they taught me mm -hmm. that yes, it can be done. Mm -hmm. And so as we take on those roles, we also have to make sure that other women can see that we are doing it. But a challenge that it's out of our control is that unbiased, con that unconscious, unconscious bias, mm -hmm. my apologies, that women, in, even women, but men, may or may not be ready for people who look like us and who act like us yeah. in the workplace. Mm -hmm. And we have a career and a journey to prove and to demonstrate that right. we are good and that we can get the job done mm -hmm. without losing who we are. But in the end, some people still have a mold or a definition of what certain positions should look like. And that is a true challenge that we face even to this day, even after so much has been said and so many um, leadership conferences and things that you see posted right. in social media about the barriers, they're still there. So we need to work hard against those, those sure. as we bring others up within our organizations, mm -hmm. but also as we grow ourselves. Do not be afraid of those. Yes, they are there, but once you realize it's there, then it can't hurt you. Then you can make it work in, to your, your advantage. Right, you can overcome them. Yes. So when you think about mentorship in your life, um, what has been some of the most important things that mentors have done for you uh, to bring you to where you are today? I think the most beautiful thing that my mentors have done for me is remind me that what it's inside of me and what I am capable of. As Latinas, we grow up thinking that I am not good enough or knowing that we're mm. good enough but not really 
telling others because it's mm. culturally not acceptable to toot your own horn. Right, right. And after you don't toot your own horn long enough, you start to doubt that you even have a horn. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> what my mentors have done for me is remind me day in and day out that yes, you can do it. Yes, you're a champion. Yes, you're strong. In addition to that, they have given me advice that is selfless, but it's also unbiased as the things that in their opinion, right. I could change and I can modify. And so when you start to receive this advice, there are two things you have to remember. These people have already made some of your mistakes, so they are coming from a place of love and trying to help you. So you need to take their advice and try to see what parts of that advice really work for you. And don't think, well, you don't know my situation. Sometimes we get defensive, mm -hmm. or sometimes we think they don't know enough. But turns out, they do know. But another part that is important right when we turn around, when we are the mentors, is we have to remember that each person is free to make their own choices. And just because we're giving them advice, if they don't take it, doesn't mean they don't value it. It's just they have made their own choices as well. We can't live through our mentees the same way we can't live th from our mentors. Yeah, that's true. So we as Latina leaders should provide opportunities for our youth um, mm -hmm. to serve as leaders so they can become a resource to other siblings and also uh, to the community. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the tips, and I know you gave some, but on finding a mentor especially, uh, that you can provide to our young Latinas? What, there are several things that come to mind, Terry. The first one is you don't need one mentor, you need several mentors, because that will give you a broader point of view. Mm -hmm. Also, as you select your mentors, make sure you don't select people who looked and think like you, because then you will not get anything new out of it. You mm -hmm. will have, you all you're looking at that point for is validation of your own viewpoints. So it is important to get a diverse uh, point of view. And some people who may not be Latinas or who might be, you know, males that are also seeing things from a different perspective in the end they are the ones who might need to be promoting you or who will open the door for you yeah, so then you get their true. point of view of what currently they see as a challenge or a barrier for you right. um, it is tempting sometimes to look for a mentor someone who has a very successful career or a very successful journey who's many years away from us and with, where that is important because they sure have a wisdom mm -hmm. that their years have given them. Right, it right. also makes them not so much be in touch with our current situation. Mm -hmm. And also things have changed from when they were in our spot. That's so true. I think That's one true. or two levels separation, it's sometimes ideal, especially in the workplace. Now if you're looking for more a career path or a journey advisor, then definitely someone with more years of experience. Yeah, that's very good advice. Um, you're among a handful of exceptional Latina leaders that I have met uh, that are passionate about passing it forward and making themselves available for other Latinas. How can Latina leaders in the C-suite executive level do a better job of mentoring in order to increase the number of Latinas in management and C-suite positions? The most important thing is we have to make the time and it has to be a deliberate decision. Mm -hmm. We need to look out for them. Sometimes they are not going to come to us, right. but we have because of our experience, the eye to see who is in need of on this mentoring. It is very important, I understand it's a relationship of two, so they mm -hmm. need to come to you. They need to want to be mentored, but sometimes they don't know how to ask, so we need That's to be true. aware of that. But especially as you reach a certain level, that means you have the knowledge and the ability to manage your calendar, to manage your commitments, to manage expectations, and so with that, you must carve out time in your day, in your month, in your week to give back to the community because yeah. all of us, I can't think of one single Latina in C-suite who has not had a mentor. Mm -hmm. And because of that, it is our responsibility to our community, to future generations, to those that are behind, coming after us, 
to give back and to take the time right. that someone did for us. Right. I right. wouldn't be here today without all of my mentors and I sure hope that I can touch and inspire as many lives as I can. Oh, I'm sure you will and I'm sure you have. Um, is there anything that both mentors and mentees should avoid doing? Um, maybe there's something that they're doing wrong as far as selecting a mentor or how they're approaching? I think one, one part that is very clear is setting up expectations from the beginning. Okay. So a mentor is not a headhunter for you. Right. A mentor is not someone who's going to get you a promotion. Yes, mm -hmm. they may have connections that eventually will help you, but go with the expectation that from your mentor you're going to get advice, you're going to mm -hmm. get wisdom, you're going to get what you need to grow professionally. Mm -hmm. They may have the doors to open, but that's not their main role. Right. Their main role is to make you, help you build yourself right. so that then you can position yourself in a better way. Of course, as they get to know you and if they have the opportunity, they sure will help you. But that is not the goal. And so I do see sometimes, and unfortunately, people reach out to me hoping really to just tap into my network rather than mm. getting my advice. Mm. And you know what, if that's what you want and that's the reason, then definitely approach it that way, but be very clear about that's what you want. Right. Don't make it sound like you want my advice right. when you're not gonna take it because all you wanted was to reach out to my friends. Um, so I think that's a common error. Another yeah. error that I see coming from the other side is, you know, we've had different journeys, we the mentors, mm -hmm. <laughs> now that I'm in the older side of the <laughs> pocket. Um, but, you know, we, there are things that we wish we had done differently. There are mistakes that we wish we had avoided. Mm -hmm. And as we pass on that knowledge to others, we can't be too disappointed or take it personal when our mentee does not take that advantage, that, right. that advice. Right. Or if we say, you know, if I were you, I wouldn't go into that interview. Well, that's not our decision, and if they choose to go, we need to be respectful. They are free individuals. It's no different that we can't live our lives through our children. Right, right, we right. can't reach our full potential professionally through our mentor, mentees. Right, right. That's great. Mm -hmm. You know, improving representation of Latina leaders will lead to a more rounded view of customers that represent their lar largest purchasing power. I see this particularly critical with the finance services. Uh, given that more than half of the women now control their household finances and are responsible for household savings and investing, do you think that we will see Latinas start their own financial firms and be successful because they understand the Hispanic market and are there some Latinas out there already doing this? Yes, definitely. Latinas are already doing that and you know it's been several years now and it's a very hot topic. It's a very um, conversation that carries a lot of weight these days because yes, they realize who are the decision makers in a yes. lot of the Latino, the Hispanic households. Mm -hmm. But I think in general, what we hadn't realized, Latinas ourselves, is that we actually have that power and we can um, release it, right? We can unleash it. So mm -hmm. um, I think more and more women are noticing that and as we see some that start to do it, others are catching on and are very successfully doing that. Mm, that's great. Avec, as a Latino leader in a corporate arena, I appreciate you taking the time to be my guest today. And Thank you, And you're sharing your journey and advice has surely inspired our viewers. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Terry. Really Thank you. And Thank, Thank you, you for, for joining me. us. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you in the future. Come back and, and we know you're going to go to a farther journey. And, um, hopefully we'll learn more as far as, as you go further up on the ladder. Thank well, you. What more we're going to know from you is going to be fantastic, I'm sure of that. Thank you, Terry. <laughs> thank you. Always glad to be that. Well, thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you again in Esa Latina. Thanks.